so this talk this talk which is uh, one of the um, more interesting talks i think personally speaking uh, i'm looking forward to and uh, it's special for another reason because this is one of the few talks which has two speakers um who have, who have uh, proposed a talk out of which uh, padmaja will be speaking today and she's currently working as a software developer at vmware uh, she has given a lot of talks before as well at pycon us 2017 2018 and at pycon india 2016 um she uh, is currently working on a product that enhances customer serviceability by providing proactive recommendations that's a lot of words but i'm sure you know, she'll elaborate at some point um and um, she is a data science enthusiast with a strong passion for dance and loves going on adventurous trips nice to meet you padmaja the second speaker is uh, bhargava uh, and uh, he spent the last 17 years helping businesses both large and small use data and algorithms to build a moat he has worked on large scale machine learning problems in transportation banking software and networking products his previous startup was incubated by sap currently he is working at binice which he co-founded and he is focused on helping small and medium sized e-commerce companies improve conversion he has presented a talk and workshop in sapa usa sapa india and pycon india in the past and he is also a good friend so i'm very happy to be part of this stage and see how the talk will go on which i haven't mentioned the title of uh the talk is let's build a no code tool for small businesses to reduce churn so i think we are at the 550 mark and uh, padmaja the stage is yours Oh. Oh. Good. Okay. A uh, very good evening to all. I'm really excited to be a part of this year's uh, PyCon India edition. I'm sure it's going to be the it's going to be one of the most adventurous version of pycon till date so disclaimer notice please excuse me if there are any technical glitches during the presentation i really hope there aren't any so with that said today we will be looking into one of the most interesting topic called as churn analysis and how in the next 20 minutes you can build an end to end tool which can be used by anyone to, to perform churn analysis So before I uh, start talking all nerdy here is a small introduction about us so I'm Padmaja Bhagwat a huge data science enthusiast and a deep and a software developer at VMware so here I work for a team that enhances the customer serviceability by providing proactive alerts and recommendations to our customers and Bhagwat here is a deep learning engineer he has been a lead data scientist at many top notch com companies and currently he is a founder and CTO at Binas and to be honest he is one of the biggest inspiration for me to be in the stream of data science so enough about us so let's get directly started with the talk so this is how the out outline of the talk is going to look like we'll start off with providing the business context behind this problem we'll also look into the different steps that are being followed to perform churn analysis then oh, we'll look into the architecture of the tool that we are building today and finally if everything goes as expected i'll promise you a very awesome demo towards the end of it so let's get started so uh, we have seen that covid 19 has had a huge negative impact on the businesses especially on the small scale businesses and most of them have now moved online and at this point of time it is extremely important for these businesses to ensure that most of their customers are sticking with their product for as long as possible so in this highly competitive online world businesses cannot settle for a reactive approach where they first wait for the customer to abandon their product and only then they start taking some actions it is high time we start taking some proactive actions where we uh, we perform everything that we can in order to retain the customers for as long as possible right so before we dive into the exact steps that are being followed to perform churn analysis 
Uh, let's zoom out a little bit and see how exactly the customer engagement lifecycle looks like. So it starts off with you advertising your product, thereby increasing the awareness of the product among the potential customers, right? Then uh, those potential customers, uh, they start engaging with the product. They start exploring the features. They, they really like the features that you're providing. So they even get converted into paid customers. Now you expect those customers to remain loyal to, to your product for the rest of their lives. Now, this is what you ideally expect to happen, but real world is never ideal, right? So that's why uh, there are different phases where your customers might start disengaging from your product. And the first kind of disengagement is called as customer abandonment. So in this case, the customer is really impressed with the advertisement that you have put out. So they come and they explore the different features that you're providing, but after that point, they never really come back. So once, uh, uh, so after this kind of disengagement, there's yet another kind of disengagement called as customer attrition. So here, the customers seem to be really interested in your product. Therefore, they even sign up for the free trial version. But after the trial period gets over, they never really come back. Now, again, this is called as customer attrition. And the third and the worst kind of customer disengagement is called as churn. So in this case, the customer is, the customer whom you thought was loyal, the customer who was using your product for many, many years, all of a sudden stop using the product one day. Now, this has a huge negative impact on the business because you would have already invested so much of your time and energy trying to nurture this customer, right? Trying to get this customer onboarded for as long as possible. But if they stop using your product all of a sudden, it has a huge negative impact on the business. And this is what we will be focusing on in today's talk, how we can avoid this exact same situation. Because we all can agree that it is much less expensive to retain existing, existing customers than to acquire new ones, right? So uh, the tool that we will be building today helps us identify this exact phase where the customer the active customer transitions from being active to being at risk of churning the system forever. So our product will help will help you understand the exact time frame when this transition is happening. So uh, since the beginning of the talk, I've been telling that it's extremely important to perform churn analysis. So now that we have established that it's important to perform timely uh, churn analysis, Let's look into the exact steps that are being followed in order to perform the churn analysis. So the first and the obvious step is that you have to pre-process your data. You have to convert it into the format that your machines can understand, right? Then, uh, then we'll be discussing various different models that can be used in order to perform churn analysis and how you can uh, derive predictions out of the model that you have built. And finally, we'll be building a super cool web application to visualize the entire analysis that we have done in the previous three steps. All right. So uh, for this presentation, we have used an openly available data set called as Telecom Churn, which, is, which, which you can easily download from Kaggle. So here, uh, I have just picked a few features, but in reality, the data has a lot more features to it. Let me tell you, you can easily extend the steps that I'm talking, I'll be talking in the next slide to any kind of data, as long as you ensure that your data has these three features. First is you need to ensure that the, your data has customer ID, which is the unique identifier for your customer. Then you need to ensure that the data has this churn uh, column, which says whether the customer has churned or not, which is obvious because you are doing churn analysis so, and we need to have this column for sure. And finally, the most important feature that you need to ensure that ensure is this tenure. Now, this tenure period means slightly different for different people. Okay, for the customers who have already churned, uh, let's say for this third customer, this tenure period of two months indicate that the customer has used the product only for two months. So the entire lifetime of the customer with the product was just two months. But whereas uh, for the customer who has not yet churned. This tenure period of 34 indicates that the customer has been using the product from past 34 months and will continue using the product in the future. So there's a subtle difference between these two, but I think it's really important to understand in order to do the correct kind of prediction. So 
as long as you ensure that these three features are there remaining all features can be anything depending on the kind of uh, business you are into right so again depending on the type of data you can perform different kind of pre processing steps on it in this case as you can see most of the features are categorical we'll be going with the simple one hot encoding and pandas provides this very handy function called as pd.getdummies where you just have to send all the categorical features and boom it creates the entire uh, column of one hot encoded uh, features right so again if your data contained uh, time series data uh, which talked about the way your customer purchased with your product then you can probably use this ts fresh uh, package which will help you create the features out of your time series data now again depending on your data you go ahead with different kind of pre processing in this case we are sticking to a very basic kind of pre processing which is uh, creating one hot encoding out of the categorical data so once we have converted the data into the format that can be understood by the uh, model uh, let's explore the different ways that uh, we can use to perform, to build the model right so by looking at the model you can uh, sorry by looking at the data you think that okay this is a straightforward classification task uh, i uh, so you can think that okay i'm i can use a simple decision tree or logistic regression to perform this churn uh, churn classification right which is great uh, these models will tell you whether the customer is going to churn or not and will also give you the probability with which the customer is going to churn but all that you are looking for in here is uh, you are trying to build a model which can tell you the, at what exact point of time the customer is going to churn because you would want to take the actions at correct point of time and that's when the survival analysis models come into picture so there are different kinds of survival analysis models uh, but for this presentation we will be sticking to the cox proportional hazard model which is the most popular uh, one in the in the survival analysis model so um, again uh, python provides this very useful package called as lifelines uh, where you can uh, play around with different kinds of survival analysis models so as i had told before you can see in this plot on the x axis you have tenure period and on the y axis you have the survival chances of the customer so uh, you can see that the survival chances of one indicates that the customer has loving the product and will stick with the product for a very long time whereas the survival chances of zero indicates that the customer is going to churn for sure so in between these two periods uh, from the time the survival chances of the customer reduces from 1 to 0 you need to take some action you need to send some offer do something uh so that you can increase so that you can increase the lifetime of the customer with your product right so this is exactly why we are going with survival analysis models it tells you the exact time when the specific event is going to happen so uh let's see how exactly we can build this using python although the the concept might look a little complicated you can see how easy it is to build this model using python uh, so all you have to do is you have to import cox fitter from this very famous lifelines package i highly recommend you to go and go ahead and use this package uh, so once you have imported the model you just have to split your data into training and testing and you have to initialize the model and you just have to do model dot fit and you have to send the training data as the first parameter and then the duration column in our case it's tenure as the second parameter and finally the event column which in our case is whether whether the customer is going to churn or not so if you you just have to follow these three simple line of code in order to build your uh, churn analysis model so it is as simple as that so after you have built this model if you do model dot plot it will exactly tell you how important each feature in your data set is so on the x axis you can see the hazard ratio just think of it as some coefficient all right and on the y axis you can see the exact features that are being used to train the model so all you have to remember is higher the hazard ratio higher the chances of customer churning out which is not what we want we want the exact opposite we want our customers to stick with the product for a very long time that's why we focus on the 
features that has the lesser hazard ratio right in our case these are the last four feature have, has a very low hazard ratio so now let's just pick one of the uh, feature which is total charges and see how changing this feature impacts the survival chances of our customer so you can see the uh, total charges has decent hazard ratio of zero so now let's see uh, how it impacts the su survival chances right so all you have to do is you have to do model dot plot partial effects on outcome and just send the feature that you're interested to uh, learn about so here you can see the black dotted line indicates the baseline uh, survival curve of the data set now by some chance if you just reduce the total chances total charges uh, in the data set to zero you can see the survival curve has moved towards the left which means the the chances of surviving customer surviving his dropping down rapidly and it is dropping right from the 10th month itself whereas if you increase the total charges to 4000 you can see that the customer is sticking with the product for a very long time right only after 60th month the chances start reducing so which is obvious right like if the customer is uh, spending too much uh, if if the customer is spending a lot on your uh, system then it is obvious that the customer is going to stick with the product for a very long period of time that is what this graph is uh, telling us so uh, now that we have built a model and we have seen how each feature uh, impacts the survival chances let's do the exact prediction we need to know at what exact point of time our given customer is going to churn up so that we can take a relevant action before that right so for that we will be looking at only those customers who have not yet churned the customers who have already churned you cannot really do anything about that so the uh, for the customers who have not yet churned they are called a censored subject so you all you have to do is you just have to do model dot predict survival function and send the censored subject as an input you get the entire prediction uh, of when the customer is going to churn so this is how the graph looks like the dotted line what it indicates is the is the survival chances of this specific customer and how it is varying over the period of time. You can see at 40th month, the customer will definitely churn out. But there is a slight issue with this uh, prediction that the model has given. The model thinks that the tenure period of 22 months is the total lifetime of this customer with the product, which is not true. As I had mentioned before, for the customers who have not yet churned, this just Tenure period just indicates that the customer has been using the product from past 22 months and will continue using the product. Therefore, till 22nd month, you are for sure you know that the customer has been sticking to the product, right? Therefore, you have to condition your prediction uh, by dividing each one of the value by with the tenure period. So now you get this uh, bold line. Here you can see that till 22nd month the survival chance of customer is extremely high which is one only after that it starts reducing all right so here we have seen the how the survival curve of the customer is varying over different period of time now if you want to take some action let's say you would want to send some offer when the survival chance of the customer reduces by 50 percent then uh, python provides this very simple function again called as QA survival times. So using this QA survival times from the lifelines package, all you have to do is you have to send the percentile and you have to send a conditioned graph that we got in the previous plot as an input. And there you go. You will get the exact month when the survival chances of this customer reduces by 50%. So you can see that at 30th month, the survival chance of the customer has reduced to 50%. And you can see the remaining charges, obviously 22 minus 30 multiplied by 89, which is around 712. So we know that we have roughly eight months uh, of uh, to save this customer, right? So uh, we know that a 30th month, we would want to send some offers. Now those offers cannot be some random offer. It has to be very much relevant and targeted to the audience. That's why we again come back to the feature importance plot that we saw in the beginning. So as I had mentioned before, we will be focusing on those features which has less hazard ratio. In this case, it is payment by credit card, payment by bank transfer, 
uh, whether the customer has one year contract or two year contract if the customer has either one of these four features it there is a high probability that the customer will use your product for a very long period of time now instead of just talking let's exactly see how each one of these feature impact the survival chances so again uh, going back to this customer you can see the original subscription uh, of this customer looked something like this the customer had only subscribed for credit card payment and had no other subscription so if you are sending some offer make sure that the customer subscribes to this two year contract so from this graph you can clearly see that just by getting the customer subscribed to this two year contract the survival chances like more than doubles from 22 it is now as high as 55 month right so similarly for other features as well and also you can see that if customer unsubscribes from this credit card due to some reason the survival chances drops so you don't want that to happen so till now we saw how to pre process the data how we can build a model and how to send a targeted offer to our customer right so you are really happy with this now you do the entire analysis now you go ahead and present this to your boss now if your presentation looks something like this uh, all they are think is what on the earth is going on right because this is not at all comprehensive so your presentation has to be such that everyone no matter what their background is ha have should be able to identify what is going on they should be able to tell okay at this exact point of time the customer is going to churn out right so that's when you start thinking okay fine what if i build a web application out of it then you start thinking okay i need to start learning all this uh, uh, web framework such as django or flask and then you start thinking about learning ui frameworks such as uh, so different ui frameworks right so what if i tell you uh, you don't have to learn any of those you can build an entire end to end web application just using python so if you don't uh, believe me so there is this very cool package in python called as streamlit it is the easiest and fastest way to build a web application using python and the best part is you don't even have to know any html and css for it so if you don't believe me you can see how simple writing the streamlit code is so all you have to do is import streamlit as st and you have to keep uh, embedding these streamlit statements wherever you think it's necessary into your python code itself you don't have to create anything separately for this for example if you are doing a matplotlib all you have to do is st.pyplot and you send the figure that you have built using matplotlib and that goes on to your web application and if you think the plot needs some explanation all you have to do is you have to do st dot write and send any uh, write any kind of description that you that you think should go on the website right it is as simple as that and running the application is even more simple all you have to do is streamlet run and you have to send the python file name and there you go you have a very nice web application running on your local server right so uh in order to make this web application publicly available for anyone to use on the real time basis obviously you have to deploy this on cloud in our case we have deployed it on heroku uh so you can just follow these four simple steps to deploy any python applications on uh, heroku so for that you just have to ensure these two files are present in your uh, project first is the requirement.txt which has th uh, the names of all the packages that are that are required to run the streamlit application and uh, you have this you must have this proc file so this proc file contains the command to run the streamlit application so in our case it is just streamlit run and the main python file name so as so, as long as you have this you are good to deploy your entire application on cloud so this is what the architecture of today's demo is going to look like we are going to feed in the csv file as an input and we are going to build our model using all these super cool package that we just spoke about and then we'll be using uh, streamlit to build our uh, web application so let's directly jump into our demo yes uh, so yeah this is the final web application that was built and you can from here we'll be selecting the 
our input file. So you can see how nicely it presents the entire uh, information on website. So this is the raw data that we uh, that uh, our uh, that our website that our database contains, and this is the pre-processed data. And then let's go ahead and build the model. So this is the different survival curve, how the survival chances varies with varying total charges. And this was entirely built using the Cox proportional hazard model. You can read more about it here. And then uh, we can see how the model predicts. You can select any customer from this drop down uh, for which you want to predict the exact time when this customer might churn. Right? So let's keep the default uh, selection itself. So we can see that for this customer, at around 60th month, the customer is going to churn. And till around 35, 35th month, the survival chances of customer is completely high. right? So we can, hear, we can see here that at around 49th month, the survival chances of this customer drops by 50%. We can roughly see that from the graph as well at around 49th month it is dropping to around 50 percent right now if you think that you cannot wait till the till the survival chances reduces to 50 percent if you want to take action in the very beginning then you just have to increase the criticality okay uh just a second we selected this data we built the model And this is the very nice feature uh, importance graph that we saw. And uh, we are making our predictions. So if you increase the uh, criticality of you will see the exact time. In this case, we have increased it to 0.7. So here we'll see the exact month when the comes to 70%, all right? Okay, it just takes a while to run. So yeah, it is coming slowly. Okay, Five minutes. At, around, okay at around 44th month, you can see the uh, survival chances of customer has reduced to 70%. And finally, you can see how changing each feature impacts the survival chances of your customer. Right? Okay, there is some issue. But if you look at the model diagnostics, uh, uh, ultimately, you need to ensure that whatever data, whatever uh, model that you have built is good enough for any kind of prediction. And here you can see that the uh, for our model is predicting pretty good for the lesser tenure period. And for the higher tenure pre period, our model is not really able to capture the entire essence of it, which is fine to some extent, because you would want your model to perform really well uh, when the tendency of the customer to churn is high, which is in the beginning of the uh, beginning stage of the customer life cycle, right? So this is the entire application that I've built within just like a day. I'm sure you can do the great job if with all your design skills and all. So if I can build this within a day, definitely you can do it too. So this is the entire summary of the talk. We pre-process the data using Pandas. And if you have distributed data, go ahead and use Dask. Uh, we predicted the, predicted the churn using Lifelines package, and then we built a web application using Streamlit, and we finally deployed all our changes on Heroku. If you are really interested in uh, playing around with this model, you can find the entire code in here. So these are the references if you are interested uh, to learn more about this topic. Uh, and that's pretty much about all about it. Uh, thank you so much for attending this talk. Uh, we are now open to taking questions. Thank you for uh, awesome talk, Um And um, you know, I appreciate that you know um, you kept it within time, and also more from Thank a topical standpoint, I think a lot of people will appreciate that it is um, it doesn't actually require a lot of code to go the last mile, Thank right? Because that is the that is what people they do all the fancy stuff, but then they struggle at the end of how to deploy, how to Exactly. Exactly. So we're open, 
ਫਿਰ ਉਹ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਆਂਸਰ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਸੋ ਯਾ ਸੋ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਦਾ ਹੋਲ ਆਈਡੀਆ ਆਫ ਦਿਸ ਟਾਕ to make sure that uh, you not only build an amazing product but you also present it in the most amazing way possible and with streamlit is it is definitely possible to do it without having to learn too many new tools right uh, so there have been some comments um, during the talk um, all right okay not so so one one is this looks similar to our shiny so how, do you have any experience with our shiny Uh, uh so this is like uh, so this is like literally and so uh, of course shiny works only with r so this is like one take on how it works but it makes uh, a lot more usage well obviously it's hard to compare against shiny because shiny has been around for a very long time uh streamlit just came it's been about for a year uh but it's gone the venture route so this been a lot more uh interest in terms of building this and then having more flexibilities but in the python ecosystem obviously this is the most popular one i mean this is the only one that provides the ease of use there is a dash as well so so dash is predominantly for dashboarding so if you think about these two things uh if you do dash dash is literally packaging plotly and then building dashboards right but what streamlit provides us access to apis So if you see this what we have done is actually build the models and then provide the models as an API we didn't have to explicitly go and build a flask or a django app as the major tool we didn't have to do specific stuff so, okay so, do you know how to do routing do you know how to do deployment all those things are entirely abstracted away to some meaningful extent right so that makes it going to production that much more easier and simpler especially for a data scientist that who doesn't have so much of web skills to start with right um all right uh, so samir is asking can you share the github uh, can you padmaja can you throw yes. up the screen with uh, the resources once more uh yeah so this is the link from where you can access the entire code right. yeah and um, i for my part i will Uh, get all the resources from Padmaja and Bhargava and I'll put them up on the Zulip room and again they'll all be on Twitter we'll send out the mail all of those good stuff um, I think we are excellently on time and we also have the next speaker Jennifer in line so uh, Bhargava and Padmaja thank you so much Padmaja thank you for an awesome talk it was very clear um, I think um, it, it was the pacing was perfect and that was good thank you yeah, thank you thanks, thanks, thanks a lot everyone. I'm going to have you step down from the stage so um, we can go okay. to the ads and then to okay, thank you